Here we go. Let's see this. Got the new figures. That is the launch director. They are ready to go. We are getting very close to T minus yeah, thirty seconds. seconds. Hmm? And you will hear the whole TV from from this angle. All right, let's see. Let's see if this is space launch lock. First time in nearly a decade. This is up. American astronauts. Twenty nineteen, eighteen, seventeen, sixteen, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, twelve, eleven, ten. Eight, It is up in the sky, boys. It's, it's up there. Oh, look at that speed. Look at that speed. Bro, look at that! Chris, when you see that blue coming out of the back, that's because there's there's not as much atmospheric pressure on it, so that's why it expands outward. And we are getting that first stage engine is going to fire for about another 20 seconds, 23 seconds. And Chris, wow. that is really a step that we want to pay attention to. That separation of the first stage and the first stage is all right back to Earth. Yeah. Are you sure? Bring in 
like that's the needle, like landing it through it to go That's the rocket. That the stage is just disconnected. That's what you want. That's the difference between the way Elon Musk does it and NASA. Instead, that thing that just fell off, he has it actually land. Whereas NASA just has parachutes. Yeah. Oh well, it looks like it is. I know that we're going to be excited to see that, but the world that Bob and Doug are living in is just making sure that that engine is continuing to burn. Yeah. That they're still on your the right trajectory. All the systems are looking good, and it looks like they are. The cameras are glitching. Probably a good sign. That means all the automatic that uh, was. sequences are working well. We don't hear too much chatter coming from the right. control center from MCC. That's, That's a good thing too. Almost to ten. Now, even though we're nominal. Go ahead, Mike. I'm sorry. When you hear that word nominal coming, no, it's fine. When you hear that word nominal, that's always good. Uh, that you know that sets the not to reach drop. ten thousand. Everything is a okay. We're looking good, just like we expect. So we want to keep hearing that for a few more minutes and get those engines cut and get them in space safely. And there's that ten thousand kilometers per hour threshold, which is just over sixty two hundred miles per hour. And the picture on the right, I have to keep reminding myself that that's a live shot. It looks like the greatest science fiction movie ever produced. It's just so fantastic that the launch was a go today. And it's been a success so far. Really, really amazing stuff. David Curley, what's the feeling like on the ground? Are you seeing the first stage rocket at all coming back? Not yet. You can see it. Uh, it's got about another three minutes until it'll do its entry burn. And that's, there are nine Merlin rocket engines right. on that. Terminal trajectory. Uh, they say everything is normal with their trajectory, meaning they're heading onto the right path to try and get on the effort to catch up to the space station. So you're seeing the like, first stage, you can see those grid fins that you mentioned, Chris Jacobs, that will help guide it, uh, but at 8.45, kind of so I mean, it's plus 8.45 coming up in about two down. minutes, you'll see three oh, of those yeah, nine engines fire to slow it down. The first stage doesn't have any of that protection when it comes back into the atmosphere, so they, the way they overcome that is by firing the engines and slowing it down enough that when it re-enters the atmosphere, it won't burn up, and it'll be a 34-second burn of that entry stage of those three engines whoa, 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 whoa. to bring us in. And seeing some of these pictures of Doug and Bob in the capsule uh, is just remarkable. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of uh, American stage astronauts. Two is still good. And just to clarify, that picture on the left is the stage two rocket propelling the Crew Dragon capsule. The picture on the right is actually the stage right. one the Falcon the 9 rocket three. returning to Earth. So those are actually moving in opposite directions as we pass the 15,000 kilometers per hour mark, which is approaching 9,400 Oof, Ultraman just killed himself. What the heck? Yeah, guys, I'm going to have to do videos with Ultraman and everybody else later on. Just so want wait for that, guys. It's a completely flat mom. Earth is just paper. It's completely paper. Look at Pizzle bro. Look at Pizzle bro. Look at this kid. Look at this kid. Look at this kid. Look at that cat. Yeah, this slows it down. This will go on for about 35 seconds, as I mentioned, just to slow it down. And if you watch those grid fins, you can start to see them kind of move. And that's what keeps this, as we've heard earlier in one of the pieces, you know, putting a, landing a pencil, that's what keeps it uh, north and south or up and down as it's coming down back in into land. And, and as land is that boat, it land to start to move. So that, that, that bird is over. The next thing we're going to see... We will see that at 927, in fact, all plus, everything's good, they say. That's what, those are the reports from Mission Control. So coming up in about a minute, we'll see the final burn. And uh, as Davenport has told us before, uh, you don't always get to see the landing because, uh, you know, you got a camera that's getting shaken and, you know, this is a rocket, actually, that's coming back. <laughs> there you lost the picture. That's, that's kind of what happens. And there's the 25,000 kilometers per hour, which is... 15,534 miles per hour. So again, oh, okay. continuing to accelerate as they make their way to orbit. And back down. Step. And back shut down. There's the second stage engine cut off right there. And that will be just good news, Chris. Well. That means that uh, 
And it means that they've got their, uh, there we go. They have it land on a ship. That's great news. That much more difficult. Yeah, that's great news. 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 Second stage. That's really good news. And Chris, you asked a little bit about the atmosphere down here. There it is. They didn't open the gates. Who were applauding as that Falcon 9 took off and uh, really ran our chest. And it looks like Falcon 9 has returned successfully to that. They drone. finally landed it, boys. Amazing, amazing technology. I know, I that that quickly, it. under 10 minutes. That Falcon 9 rocket has propelled Doug and Bob into orbit and has returned safely yeah, to the drone ship. Yeah, in under 10 I mean, minutes. Hats That's off crazy. to SpaceX for developing that technology. Truly incredible. Now, Mike Massimino, if you'd like to Sorry, weigh in at attention. if you'd like to weigh in at this stage, Mike Massimino, Bob and Doug now <laughs> can see they're experiencing weightlessness. They're breaking out their uh, mementos that they brought from home. What are they experiencing right now? Uh, utter joy is what it is, and I'm very happy for him. Uh, this is a uh, great coverage. Those cameras we have, that's another uh, advantage. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We didn't have those cameras in the shuttle program. We had, like, it's called a lipstick camera. One camera we found on the back of one of the flying engineers, and that's all you had. Now we've got them all over the vehicle, inside the cabin, outside, on the rocket. It's just a wonderful experience we all can share. And, but they are feeling utter joy. They are euphoric. They are sublime. They are really happy that they got to through that launch system, uh, through that launch sequence. They're really happy to be uh, in orbit and, and to bring the United States back. Both of these guys are military officers. Bob from the Air Force, Doug a Marine. They are so happy to, to have done this from American soil again. It's a great day, not just for the United States, but for the whole world, to have the capability to launch from the U.S. again with people inside. And they are so proud and so grateful that so many people made this possible for them to be a part of. And so they're happy that they're there, and they're proud of being on the team, and they are very, very grateful for what, what we've done today. We, and all of us can be proud of what we accomplished. Mike, just 11 and a half Dude. minutes into their 19-hour journey, so a lot longer to go before they reach the ISS. What do they do now for the next 18 hours and 50 minutes? Until what? Yeah, they get ready. Uh, you know, they have to transfer uh, through an orbital stage. We used to call it post-insertion. I'm sure they still call it the same thing. There's usually no rest of the weary. There's plenty of things to do. They're going to have to set up... Uh, their cockpit so they can get ready to do their rendezvous. They're probably going to get some rest coming up here, I would think, before they before they do rendezvous and the final round they do the docking. So probably maybe they have a from how they're feeling. That's the other thing. It's been a while since either of these guys have been in space. Uh, almost nine years, and and uh, and Bob maybe just a little bit longer than that. When, when I was a Capcom for his uh, his last flight. So they've got to get their uh, space legs back. And sometimes you don't feel as well as you'd like when you're first on strap because your, your body is gone. Your vestibular system is not working any longer. Uh, but I think these guys will probably be just fine. So hopefully they're feeling well. They'll get what they can done. Go keep, continue with the, with the checklist. Get right into it right away. And uh, there's really probably, there's probably not much rest. If there's anything like it was at the show, I'm sure it is. They still have to go right into the orbital phase as soon as they can. Now, Mike, we just heard from launch control that they confirmed dragon separation, meaning that stage two has now been jettisoned from the capsule. So these guys are truly autonomous now in the capsule. It's a self-propelling capsule, self-driving capsule, but these guys can also control it. They're going to be doing that uh, along the way to the International Space Station, yeah. correct? Out of you guys and the rest of the team, yeah, especially uh, for this flight. Thank you so much for what, what you've uh, done for us so today. Really you know, here, go back and go lower the orbit up on the Florida coast. Seems like a long time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, good luck. Godspeed. Do, 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 we just heard uh, Doug and Bob communicating with Launch Control, giving them their thanks. Launch Control, of course, responding. Yeah, I think that we confirmed nominal equipagination and service section Draco. Oh, with it, Bob. I know some of the boys in front. Now, they mentioned that the in progress. The nose cone will actually open up, and that will help them with navigation. Yeah, guys, these are the new figures I got. 
King of the Lord Ultra Man, I'm gonna be uh, doing an uh, episode of that maybe later today or some, some, sometime soon. And of course, the Brass Space Godzilla, because you know, he owns space. He owns, he owns that right there. That, that's his, that's his house. I mean, the euphoria they're feeling and that mission control is feeling, it's rubbing off because I'm feeling it too. It is, it is incredible. Every single nut and bolt on that spacecraft and these rockets was What? It's the guy the from Mythbusters. Sure that it was right what the right. heck? And the fact that those guys are now in orbit is a testament to the dedication of all those people. It's really thrilling. Yep. Adam, you look like you're ready to jump on a space shuttle and get right after those guys. I love the, the costume change. That's amazing. I also Send want to me in, Coach. You. I'm ready to go. You are ready, man. You are no longer <laughs> on the bench. You are on the starting lineup. I want to bring in uh, Mark Rover, who I'm sure wants to weigh in on this, too. Mark, your experience as a NASA engineer gives you a unique perspective on this. Please, tell us your thoughts. I mean, I feel like I've had chills for like a solid two hours. Uh, you know, I know what it takes, like Adam said, every nut and bolt. This every little detail of that is just, it comes together as an amazing So engineer. literally sitting on a cat post. But it's also just like a symbol, as far as I'm concerned, for not just the nation, but the world of just like hope and progress. We're like at a time where the world can use symbols oh. of oh, amazing progress and hope. So, like, congratulations to NASA and to SpaceX. Congratulations to those astronauts, but also congratulations to humanity. Like, we That's will be a space faring nation. And this was no other step. I understand that Bob and have opened their visors inside the Cruise Dragon Cat Lab. Maybe that gives them a few. Mike Massimino, I want to bring you in because you're the only one who knows firsthand what they must be experiencing. What are they looking out on right now? Mike is giving a little. Uh, well, that's what you, what the thing you want to do as soon as you get to orbit is unstrap and take a look. If you need to unstrap and look through the window, you want to take a look and look back on the beautiful planet. It is extraordinary. We can see pictures, we can see some high fidelity video, but there's nothing like being in there and actually yeah, seeing it. And when like I flight of in space, what I thought to myself was, this must be what heaven looks like. It is an absolute paradise. And you can look and see the blackest of, of uh, space in the other direction. We've checked out the neighborhood. You realize we only have this one option. It's very fragile. You see that thin atmosphere. If you think of the Earth as an onion, the, the top layer, the top skinny layer of the, of the onion is the size relationship of the atmosphere of our planet to our planet. You see that. You can see that in these images. And you realize how lucky we are to be here. And it changed my view of how I feel about our home. It's a home we all share, and it is an absolute paradise. So that's what they're looking at. And we're getting a really nice picture of that on our feed right now, I presume, from where Bob and Doug are up on the Crew Dragon capsule. David Curley, please weigh in. Give us a sense of what it's like down there at Cape Canaveral. I mean, of course, relief, major joy. What's the feeling like right now? Yeah, unless they panned out. Yeah, it, it is all those things and more, Chris. I mean, with the anticipation of Wednesday and then the scrub and then the forecast being, oh, we're probably going to have to go another day. Uh, as we got closer and closer to countdown, you could sense the anticipation and just the excitement on a rocket launch. And I have to tell you, you know, everything's, everything's dissipated now, but watching uh, that uh, rocket take off. And as I, as I mentioned a little earlier, there's a delay. Uh, you know, the speed of sound is, is fast, but it's not that fast. And it, it took a while for the sound to hit us. And then the vibration, that rocket fuel and oxygen, when it's, when it's burning, it's there's just- a bunch of thunder this it. morning, it's, uh, guys. It's trying to rip the air apart. It, it was fantastic uh, <laughs> to see these guys get uh, to the place they wanted to be at the right time. They've done all that. Now, it's a 19-hour journey to the space station, and Massimino talked about it a little bit. They have specific things they are doing, because this, this is a test mission. They're going to make sure it's a habitable environment inside the castle. Uh, they're going to try and eat, drink, and as somebody at SpaceX said earlier, do whatever kind of bio uh, work they have to do. And then they want to sleep. Uh, NASA wants them to sleep. Everybody wants them to sleep. See if you can sleep inside this capsule. We have not seen something before. If you watch some of those pictures, as they sleep inside a capsule. Those sleep spacesuits, which are pressure suits, 
blown up with air, their little capsule within a capsule, which was kind of interesting. And one other thing is you watch this vision, I, I noticed something that I hadn't seen before. You see those three screens, there's a little rest where they put their fingers. I saw Doug Hurley do this a little time. Another detailed design from SpaceX uh, as these gentlemen get ready to catch up and dock with the space SpaceX. Station. Very important. As Space Chris Gavinsport said, there are Space milestones X. on this mission that must be Planet met by X. SpaceX in order to get this spacecraft certified. Chris? Uh, those little creature comforts, they don't miss anything at SpaceX. Very, very cool, very great information, David. I appreciate that. Uh, it's hard to believe that this went off so well. I'm so happy, so excited. I want to bring in Adam Savage once again. Adam, now, you're wearing your replica orange suit that Mike Massimino wore on his way to the space shuttle, and I understand your suit is so accurate, you, you even replicated what was in Mike's pockets. Is that true? Not only what was in Mike's pockets, but I was texting him on a daily basis as I was finishing this suit, asking, where did the flares go, and what kind of Sony micro recorder was in there? And he was sending me links and telling me, sending me some of his handwritten lists from Look at those birds, bro. The what the heck? Bro, right, well, Mike, weigh in on Rodan. that. Tell me about, first of all, those extra large gloves that we just saw uh, Adam modeling that you actually wore with your suit in space. What are those all about? Yeah, so and that's great, man. I'm, I'm, you know, I've been friends for a long time. It's been a joy for me to participate in some way in some of his projects. And you reminded me, the voice recorder, I had that so I could record my thoughts for my family. And we had a little micro recorder, and I just sent you know, what I was thinking, what I was doing. It was kind of hard to take notes. You could, but not not expensive ones. So we had little micro recorders to record our thoughts. That was, that was about the flares, no little detail that I put into that suit. I remember I got on my flight notebook to give him all that info. And gloves are very important. You need a, you need a good fit because you have to work in them. Yeah. And we, when you're in the, spa, the the suit he's wearing is a launch suit, launch and entry suit. And you need to be able to move around and do things with your hands inside of the spaceship, as opposed to the the white big white suit we wear for spacewalk. And there, even the glove fit was even more critical because you're in a pressurized glove. Finding bro, look at the seagulls, so bro. Good glove fit. So things like that. You mentioned a little fingertip rest that they have on the on the uh, on the touch screens. Your hands are always working, always moving, and when you have inside of gloves, you need a good fit in order to get the job done. And then, of course, add into okay. that, they like waiting now for those kind of opening and forward rotate vehicle checkouts. We're just waiting for TCS to stabilize. We're hearing launch control, continuing to communicate with Bob and Doug yeah. in the uh, Crew Dragon Tower. Yeah. Kind of opening and Draco checkout. Amazing, amazing yeah, pictures yeah, being yeah, sent yeah, back yeah, to us. Damn, son. Where they are on their way to the International Space Station. And, you know, you get a sense there of um, sure. how large Earth is because they're moving at <sighs> roughly 17,000 miles an hour while these pictures are being shot. Incredible stuff. And, uh, Adam, I, I actually heard you had a lot to say to Mike about those gloves you were wearing. What, what's it like actually having that suit on, including those gloves? Well, when, when uh, I was getting re I was doing the research on these gloves, I, I'm also friends with Chris Hatfield, and I asked him about them. He said, well, there's, there's over a dozen different sizes, uh, and they take action. They turn to Chris Get out of the sizes, way. Absolutely oh. in the middle, the super average size. And he said that Mike Massimino's hands were the casting used for the largest space gloves. And I thought, oh, this is great. And I was interviewing Mike on stage here in San Francisco, and I mentioned that because I thought, he had something to say about it. Mike was like, really? My hands are the largest ones in NASA. I didn't know that. <laughs> I believe Adam is referring to Chris Cassidy, who is the commander of the International Space Station, someone who I actually spoke to on the phone last week. All about Very about heavy about stuff there. Adam, about Mike, about thank about you guys about both about so much. Please continue to stand by. Uh, David Curley, I believe you have some information for us. What do you got? I gotta tell you, NASA is ecstatic. We just heard from the administrator who says, uh, you know, he's, he, he's, let's say, I wanted to say over the moon, not quite over the moon, even though he'd like to get astronauts to the moon. Uh, he said, though, that he is breathing a huge sigh of relief, but he's not gonna really celebrate until Doug and Bob are back on the planet. And I have to tell you, you know, we showed the pictures earlier of the astronauts coming out hmm. in their suits and 
doing that little virtual hug with their children. And Elon Musk was asked about, you know, how important is a man mission versus all the cargo stuff you've done. And, and he said he even talked to those two boys. Uh, Megan has a six-year-old, Hurley has a ten-year-old. And he was, Elon was asked, what did you say to them? He says, we're doing our best to make sure they come home safely. And SpaceX, uh, this this one, this oh, mission had a lot birthday. more weight on it. The president oh, it of SpaceX said that even though the work orders that the engineers were doing in the factories they were building Food Dragon yes, and the Falcon 9 rocket, they had Doug and Bob's yeah. pictures on the work orders. So they knew what they were doing here, who they were trying to protect. So this has been a great start. Now we see if the docking goes off right without any hits huh? in about 18 and a half hours from now. Uh, they will be flying this capsule a couple of times. Mm -hmm. uh, in free flight now, I don't really will take control because this isn't autonomous. It's like a Tesla. You can go anywhere you want to. They'll fly there and then they'll fly a little bit before they dock to make sure they can Thank you. take over in case the computer is fair. Chris? Thank you very much, <laughs> Katie Curley. You know what? Remember <laughs> this day because you're going to remember exactly where you were. Oh my god, look at the cats. Oh, Fizzles. Imagine King Ghidorah just came over there and just swooped the rocket out. That would be funny. Alright, I'm going to cut this and we will cut when it goes back. Well, when it goes back on from the commercials. <laughs> what is the end of the video? I guess there's really nothing left, so... Thank you guys for watching the video and adios.